I am your English major coach. I am Professor Paul Hiranyo, a faculty member of the University of San Agustin. I'm a graduate of West Visaya State University in Iloilo City and U University of the Philippines, that's UP, for my master's degree. Let's start. Question number one, which type of paragraph has the goal of convincing another person to change or think about changing his or her opinion on something? A, descriptive paragraph. B, persuasive paragraph. C, expository paragraph. B, narrative paragraph. Again, which type of paragraph has the goal of convincing another person to change or think about changing his or her opinion on something. A. Descriptive paragraph. B. Persuasive paragraph. C. Expository paragraph. D. Narrative paragraph. Okay, the correct answer is persuasive paragraph. To convince, now the goal of convincing another person. To convince is to persuade. So it's persuasive paragraph. Persuasive paragraph, the goal of a persuasive paragraph is to convince your readers to agree with your opinion on an issue that concerns you. So persuasive paragraph. Question number two, uncommon words and expressions used in a particular profession or academic field can be called a dialects, b jargon, c idioms, d neologisms. Again, uncommon words and expressions used in a particular profession or academic field can be called a dialects, b jargon, c idioms, d neologism. Correct answer is jargon. These are special words that are used by a particular profession or group. For example, lawyers. And only lawyers understand this particular word. Also doctors. We have medical terms that only doctors and health professionals understand. Jargon. For example, the, wor the word or the term demurrer to evidence. Only lawyers can understand this. So in or ordinary conversations, please do not use jargon. Question number three. A good vocabulary is one that A. Impresses people. B. Helps you pass your exam. C. Makes communication easy and efficient. D. Provokes negativity. Again, a good Vocabulary is one that A. Impresses people. B. Helps you pass your exam. C. Makes communication easy and efficient. D. Provokes negativity. The correct answer is letter C. A good vocabulary is one that makes communication easy and efficient. Makes communication easy. So if you use difficult words, then it does not make communication easy. So a good vocabulary is one that makes communication easy and efficient. Question number four. The person assigned to dictate the actor's line if he forgets. A. Prompter. B. Understudy. C. Substitute. D. Assistant. The person assigned to dictate the, the actor's line if he forgets, A, prompter, B, understudy, C, substitute, D, assistant. The correct answer is prompter. Prompter is a person seated out of sight of the audience. It means usually the audience or the one, those who are inside the hall watching the play do not see this person. 
no, a person seated out of the out of sight of the audience who supplies a forgotten word or line to an actor during the performance of a play. We call this person a prompter. Question number five. Language is used to express one's emotions, needs, thoughts, desires, or attitudes. This refers to which function of language, A, personal function, B, interpersonal function, C, directive function, D, referential function. Again, language is used to express one's emotions, needs, thoughts, desires, or attitudes. This refers to which function of language, A, personal function, B, interpersonal function, C, directive function, the referential function. The correct answer is A, personal function. Personal function of language. You use language to express your opinion, your attitudes, your feelings, and your identity. When you say, I am happy, then you use the personal function of language. Language is used to express your opinion, your emotions, your attitudes, your feelings, your needs, your thoughts, your desires, and of course, your identity. That's the first, that's the personal function of language. Question number six. The myths of the Greeks reflect a, a view of the universe that acknowledges the mystery and beauty of humanity. B, that humans are the center of the universe. C, that humans and gods live alike. D, a less strange and frightening magic than the myths of other ancient civilizations. Again, the myths of the Greeks reflect A, a view of the universe that acknowledges the mystery and beauty of humanity. B, that humans are the center of the universe. C, that humans and gods live alike, the a less strange and frightening magic than the myths of other ancient civilizations? The correct answer is letter A. The myths of the Greeks reflect a view of the universe that acknowledges the mystery and beauty of humanity. This is the view of Edith Hamilton. Well, we all know that Hamilton, Edith Hamilton, was a famous author of a book on classical mythology. When I studied mythology, when I studied Greek and Roman mythology back in college, I used the book of Edith Hamilton. To the Greeks, the life of the gods so closely resembled human life that the gods felt real and tangible rather than incomprehensible and remote. In this way, Hamilton argues, the myths of the Greeks reflect a view of the universe that acknowledges the mystery and beauty of humanity. Number seven, ESP, that's English for Specific Purposes, evolved from three fields, which include all of the following except one. Which is it? A, education. B, psychology, C, linguistics, D, history. Again, ESP, or English for Specific Purposes, evolved from three fields, which include all of the following, except one, which is it? A, education, B, psychology, C, linguistics, D, history. The correct answer is letter D, history. So these three fields contributed to the birth of ESP, or English for specific purposes, education, psychology, and linguistics. History has nothing to do with ESP. So what is ESP? English for specific purposes is a term that refers to teaching or studying English for a particular career, like law, medicine, business, 
or for business in general yes internet this is the definition given by the international teacher training organization in 2005 so we can say there is a specific reason for learning and teaching english history and growth of esp in the 1960s esp practitioners believed their main job was to teach the technical vocabulary of a given field or profession. Let's say we have the medical English, we have the legal English field, you know, we have the, the business English field. In 1970s, Hutchinson and Waters first introduced the idea of learning English through content of a subject. By the 1980s, in many parts of the world, a needs based philosophy appeared in language teaching. So this is the history and growth of ESP or English for specific purposes. Question number eight, who is the Chinese leader whose essays and poems depicted the totalitarian rule in China and advocated a revolutionary movement? A. Zhao Enlai, B. Lao Tse, C. Mao Tse Tong, D. Confucius. Again, who is the Chinese leader or who was the Chinese leader whose essays and poems depicted the totalitarian rule in China and advocated a revolutionary movement? A. Chao Enlai, B. Lao Tse, C. Mao Tse Tong, B. Confucius. Correct answer is letter C, Mao Tse Tong or Mao Zedong. Mao Tse Tong was not just a political leader. He was also a writer, and he wrote essays and poems. There is even a collection of his works entitled The Selected Works of Mao Tse Tong. It is a five-volume collection. Question number nine. In the oral situational approach, the blank is primary. A, written language. B, spoken language. C, both A and B. D, neither A nor B. Again, in the oral situational approach, the blank is primary. A, written language. B, spoken language. C, both A and B. D, neither A nor B. The correct answer is letter B, spoken language. In the oral situational approach, the spoken language is primary. Since it is an oral approach, then it focuses on spoken language. I think that's basic. The oral situational approach, the oral approach or situational language teaching is an approach developed by British applied linguists between the 1930s and the 1960s. While it is unknown for many teachers, it had a big influence on language courses till the 1980s. Textbooks such as Streamline English by Hartley and Vinning, 1979, was designed following the SLT approach principles. SLT is situational language teaching. The oral approach or situational language teaching is based on a structural view of language, speech structures, and a focus on a set of basic vocabulary items are seen as the basis of language teaching, bases, plural, B-A-S-E-S, -E actually. This was a view similar to that held by American structuralists such as Fry. However, what distinguishes the situational language teaching approach is its emphasis on the presentation of structures in situations. And number 10, this book written by Ovid, remains one of the most important sources of classical mythology. A. Annals, B. Dialogus, C. Georgics, D. Metamorphoses. Again, this book written by Ovid remains one of the most important sources of classical mythology. A. Annals, B. Dialogus, C. Georgics, D. Metamorphoses. Correct answer is letter D. Metamorphoses. The Ovid no? was a Roman writer, real name Publius Ovidius Naso, 
was one of the prolific writers of the early Roman Empire. He wrote Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis, a poem in 15 books written in Latin by Ovid. It is a collection of mythological and legendary stories, many taken from Greek sources in which transformation or metamorphosis plays a role, however minor. Okay, number 11, the various teaching methods and theories used to teach English are called A, approaches, B, curricula, C, teaching aids, D, dimensions. Again, the various teaching methods and theories used to teach English are called A, approaches, B, curricula, C, teaching methods, D, dimensions, or dimensions. The correct answer is letter A, approaches. Basta theories, its approach, okay? It is a way of looking at teaching and learning. And an approach produces a method or methods. Approach is described as theories about the nature of language and language learning that serve as the source of practices and principles in language teaching. That's number 12, in an interview, the blank allows the respondent some freedom in answering the question. A, a closed, the closed question. B, open-ended question. C, probing question. D, hypothetical question. Again, in an interview, the blank allows the respondent some freedom in answering the question, a closed question, the open-ended question, C, probing question, the hypothetical question. The correct answer is letter B, open-ended questions or question. Open-ended questions are questions that cannot be answered with a simple yes or no. It requires the respondent to elaborate on their points. For example, what do you think would happen if he got caught? That is an open-ended question. Sounds interesting. How does it work? Or how do you feel about that? Open-ended questions open up conversations. When you ask an open-ended question, you don't know what the child's answer is going to be. Close-ended question, on the other hand, questions usually limit conversation to a one- or two-word response and sometimes the end conversation. Question number 13. Maya Angelou's poem on the pulse of the morning suggests that A. Each new day gives people new chances. B. Each new day is a gift when spent best. C. Each new day symbolizes the monotony of tasks. D. Each new day signifies a challenge to overcome. Again, Maya Angelou's poem on the pulse of the morning suggests that A. Each new day gives people new chances. B. Each new day is a gift when spent best. C. Each new day symbolizes the monotony of tasks. D, each new day signifies a challenge to overcome. The correct answer is letter A, each new day gives people new chances. Maya Angelou was an American poet, memoirist, and civil rights activist. On the pulse of the morning, is a poem by writer and poet Maya Angelou that she read at the first inauguration of President Bill Clinton on January 20, 1993. With her public recitation, Angelou became the second poet in history to read a poem at the presidential inauguration and the first African-American and woman to do so. Question number 14, this literary form, popular in ancient Rome, 
used humor, irony, exaggeration, or ridicule to expose and criticize the stupidity and vices of the Romans in the context of contemporary politics and other social issues, A. Elegy, B. Ballad, C. Satire, D. Novella. Again, this literary form, popular in ancient Rome, used humor, irony, exaggeration, or ridicule to expose and criticize the stupidity and vices of the Romans in the context of contemporary politics and other social issues, A. Elegy, B. Ballad, C. Satire, D. Novella. Correct answer is letter C. Satire. It is a type of social commentary. The subject of satire is human frailty, such as follies and vices. It is a means of exposing and correcting human vices. So what are the functions of satire? To make readers feel critical of themselves, of their fellow human beings, or of their society. To make readers laugh at human foolishness and weaknesses. To make fun of vicious, selfish, mean-spirited people in the hope that we will see ourselves in such people and mend our ways. And to expose errors and absurdities that we no longer notice because custom and familiarity have blinded us to them. Question number 15. In which sentence... Does the adverb tell how the action is done? Again, in which sentence does the adverb tell how the action is done? A. Christy had ice cream after she was done. B. Then Christy came home to wrap the present. C. Christy went to the store to buy a present. D. Christy wrapped the present carefully. The correct answer is letter D. Christy wrapped the present carefully. How the action is done. It requires the use of the adverb of manner. So usually, it ends with li or ly, so carefully. Therefore, the correct answer is letter D. Christy wrapped the present carefully. Okay, number 16, what method is used when learning a language is facilitated by the silence of a teacher, though he is active in setting up situation and he listens to students? A, silent way, B, suggestopedia, C, grammar translation method, D, total physical response method. The correct answer is letter A, silent way. The silent way is a methodology of teaching language based on the idea that teachers should be as silent as possible during a class, but learners should be encouraged to speak as much as possible. There are three basic principles here. The learner needs to discover or create. Learning is made easier by the use of physical objects. And learning is made easier by problem solving using the target language. Question number 17. This refers to the utilization of various instructional techniques that provide temporary support to help students re reach higher levels of comprehension and skills acquisition that they would not be able to achieve without assistance. A. Interpretation. B. Unpacking. C. Scaffolding. D. Immersion. Again, this refers to the utilization of various instructional techniques that provide temporary support to help students reach higher levels of comprehension and skills acquisition that they would not be able to achieve without assistance. A. Interpretation. B. Unpacking. C. Scaffolding. D. Immersion. The correct answer is letter C. Scaffolding. Instructional scaffolding is a teaching approach or a process through which a teacher adds support for students in order to enhance learning and aid in the mastery of tasks. Basta po, sc po scaffolding, brother, it's Vygotsky. Ito yung pag-alalay sa mga bata ng guro 
own nakatatanda. Scaffolding by Vygotsky. Vygotsky defined scaffolding instruction as the role of teachers and others in supporting the learner's development and providing support structures to get to that next stage or level. Yes, according to Raymond 2000, teachers provide scaffolds so that the learner can accomplish certain tasks they would otherwise not be able to accomplish on their own. That's according to Bransford Brown in Cocking 2000. The goal of the educator is for the student to become an independent learner and problem solver, according to Hartman, 2002. Question number 18, the importance of education in the ancient Jewish or Hebrew society was stressed in the Talmud, which stated that children should begin school at age A4, B5, C6, D7 again. The importance of education in the ancient Jewish or Hebrew society was stressed in the Talmud, which stated that children should begin school at age A4, B5, C6, D7. The correct answer is letter C, 6. Talmud is the book of Jewish law, Hebrew term meaning study or learning. Number 19, it is a breach or slip of good manners or conduct. A, faux pas. B, codisa. C, alter ego. D, femme fatale. Again, it is a breach or slip of good manners or conduct. A, faux pas. B, codisa. C, alter ego. D, femme fatale. Correct answer is letter A, faux pas. What is a faux pas? From the French phrase faux pas, of the same meaning composed of faux or false and pas or step. Basically, it is a violation of accepted social rules. What could be good manners in one culture could be a faux pas in another. Number 20, the application of social science and behavioral science research methods. So the practice of journalism is called A. Precession Journalism, B. New Journalism, C. Development Journalism, D. Yellow Journalism. Again, the application of social science and behavioral science research methods to the practice of journalism is called A. Precession Journalism, B. New Journalism, C. Development Journalism, D. Yellow Journalism. The correct answer is letter A. Precession journalism. It means treating journalism as if it were science, adopting scientific method, scientific objectivity, and scientific ideals to the entire process of mass communication and journalism. Precession journalism is a term that links the application of social science research methods, including survey research methods, to the practice of gathering information for the news purposes of journalists. Similar to a social scientist, a precision journalist discloses the data collection methodology well enough that another precision journalist or researcher could replicate the research studies and ostensibly would reach the same conclusions. That's precision journalism. Okay, 21, the technique of delving into the character's behavior to explain cause-effect relationship is called a literary analysis, the psychoanalysis, C, linguistic analysis, the metalinguistic analysis. Again, the technique of delving into the character's behavior to explain cause-effect relationship is called a literary analysis, B, Psychoanalysis, C. Linguistic analysis, D. Metalinguistic analysis. The correct answer is letter B. Psychoanalysis. This is psychoanalytic criticism. Adopts the methods employed by Freud and later theorists to interpret texts. 
it argues that literary texts like dreams express the secret unconscious desires and anxieties of the author that a literary work is a manifestation of the mind and feelings of the authors psychoanalytical criticism is a type of criticism that uses the theories of psychology to analyze literature it focuses on the author's state of mind or the state of the mind of fictional characters Question number 22. It is the audience's ability to remove themselves from the play so that they can contemplate and evaluate the performance. A. Reasonable distance. B. Aesthetic distance. C. Ideal distance. D. Manageable distance. Again, it is the audience's ability to remove themselves from the play so that they can contemplate and evaluate the performance. A. Reasonable distance, the aesthetic distance, C. Ideal distance, the manageable distance. The correct answer is B. Aesthetic distance. Aesthetic distance is a literary term that describes an audience's emotional involvement in a story or in a play. If you want to objectively evaluate a play, for example, you have to remove your emotion so that you will not be biased that is aesthetic distance 23 all of the following are guidelines to effective communication except one which is it a creating lean and efficient messages B adopting an audience centered approach C fostering an open communication climate D. Improving one's speed at writing messages. Again, all of the following are guidelines to effective communication except one. Which is it? A. Creating lean and efficient messages. B. Adopting an audience-centered approach. C. Fostering an open communication climate. D. Improving one's speed at writing messages. Correct answer is... Larry D, improving one's speed at writing messages. We are talking here of effective communication. And one's speed of writing messages is very mechanical. It has nothing to do, or it has nothing much to do with effective communication. And it, uh, other than it saves time, right? The rest, options A, B, and C. Creating lean and efficient messages, it means short messages, accurate, brief, and concise messages, B, adopting an audience-centered approach, and C, fostering an open communication climate are important things as far as effective communication is concerned. So the correct answer is letter D, improving one's speed at writing messages is not one of the guidelines to effective communication 24 which is not one of the three realms of the afterlife portrayed in dante's the divine comedy a inferno b el dorado c paradiso the purgatorio again which is not one of the three realms of the afterlife portrayed in dante's the divine comedy a inferno b el dorado c paradiso the purgatorio Correct answer is El Dorado. The three realms of the afterlife are Inferno, Purgatorio, and Paradiso, not El Dorado. El Dorado is a legend about adventures, about adventurers in South America. Legend tells of a city which is covered in gold, and that city is El Dorado, and the natives have many valuable trinkets. In the past, it has driven many greedy adventurers to South America. 25. The senator claims that congressional salaries should be raised. He says business executives doing comparable work make much more and that congressional salaries haven't kept pace with inflation. But keep in mind what he does for a living. His self-serving recommendation must be rejected. 
what fallacy is committed by the above argument? A. Argumentum ad baculum. B. Argumentum ad ignorantium. C. Argumentum ad hominem. D. Argumentum ad misericordiam. The correct answer is Argumentum ad hominem or hominem. I was corrected by my school principal. He told me that it's Argumentum ad hominem. It's a Latin word, hominem. You know, my principal has a doctorate in philosophy from a university in, in Rome. He graduated summa cum laude, so I believe him. He studied in Rome, and he is an Augustinian priest. He knows his Latin. Argumentum ad hominem or hominem. In argumentum ad hominem, you attack the person instead of focusing on the topic. For example, who believes you? You're a prostitute. This is a fallacy because just because she's a prostitute, we cannot believe what she says? No, right? So that's argumentum ad hominem or hominem. The abusive fallacy, an abusive attack against someone making an argument instead of addressing the argument itself. 26. Which of the following has no structural error or errors? A. She and I are classmates, ourselves are friends. B. Mary and Angie are talking on the phone, they are friends. C. Jenny and Tessie are cousins themselves are very close. Larry D, the three girls knew each other from high school. Their selves are acquaintances. So which one has no structural error or error is the correct answer is Larry B, Mary and Angie are talking on the phone. They are friends. So let's analyze. You know, this involves the use of correct pronouns. Letter A, ourselves. No? She and I are classmates. It's not ourselves, our friends. We are friends. Option C, Jenny and Tessie are cousins. Themselves are very close. So they are very close. And option D, the three girls knew each other from high school. Themselves are acquaintances. No, they are acquaintances. So the correct answer is letter B, it has no structural error. Mary and Angie are talking on the phone. They are friends. Question number 27. Who erected the greatest theater in ancient Rome? A. Nero. B. Pompeii. C. Caligula. D. Diocletian. Correct answer is Pompeii. The theater of Pompeii or the theater of Pompeii. Pompeii's theater. In 55 BC, Pompeii built Rome's first theater. It was a Greek outdoor theater, but it was built on level ground instead of on a hill. The seats were arranged in rows of semicircles sloping toward the stage. 28. I die just when the dawn breaks to herald the day. Who said this? A. Jose Rizal, B. Jose Laurel, C. Benigno Aquino Jr., D. Manuel L. Quezon. Again, I die just when the dawn breaks to herald the day. Who said this? A. Jose Rizal, B. Jose Laurel, C. Benigno Aquino Jr., D. Manuel L. Quezon. The correct answer is letter A. Jose Rizal. This is an excerpt from Jose Rizal's Mi Ultimo Adios or My Last Farewell. It says, I die just when I see the dawn break through the gloom of night to herald the day. And if color is lacking, my blood thou shalt take, poured out at need for thy dear sake to die with its crimson, the waking ray. 29. Complete this line from Benjamin Franklin's Poor Richard's Almanac. Early to bed, 
Blank makes a man healthy. A. Early to rise. B. Early rising. C. Waking up early. D. Rising early. The correct answer is letter A. Early to bed, early to rise makes a man healthy. Benjamin Franklin was one of the founding fathers of the United States. He was a printer, publisher, author, inventor, scientist, and diplomat. Poor Richard's Almanac, Franklin's most popular and enduring contribution to American literary culture. Franklin published the manuscript under the pseudonym Richard Saunders. The character was a dull and foolish astronomer who became thoughtful, pious, and humorous over the years. Poor Richard's Almanac contained practical information about the calendar, the sun and the moon, and the weather. Featured homespun sayings and observations. Franklin put an aphorism at the top or bottom of most pages. And these sayings allowed Franklin to include many moral messages in very little space. Franklin created a fictitious author, editor for this publication, the chatty Richard Saunders. Number three, Moorish literature in Spain is basically A, Jewish, B, Buddhist, C, Islamic, D, Christian. Again, Moorish literature in Spain is basically A, Jewish, B, Buddhist, C, Islamic, D, Christian. The correct answer is Islamic. Moorish literature in Spain is basically Islamic. The term Moor was first used by the Christian Europeans to designate the Muslim inhabitants of Spain and Portugal, collectively known as the Iberian Peninsula. Okay, number 31. Which of these capitalized words does not belong to the group? A. My home is a happy place. B. My lair is a solemn place. C. My building is a quiet place. D. My abode is a peaceful place. Again, which of these capitalized words does not belong to the group? A. My home is a happy place. B. My lair is a solemn place. C. My building is a quiet place. D. My abode is a peaceful place. The correct answer is letter B. My lair is a solemn place. Home, building, and abode. It's options A, C, and D. They refer to dwelling places of humans. Lair, on the other hand, is for animals. So the correct answer is letter B, my lair is a solemn place. 32. To ensure the relevance of instructional materials to the curriculum, it is important to A. Include test evaluation. B. Consider the grade or year level. C. Have a list of goals and objectives. D. Base them on the textbook used. Again, to ensure the relevance of instructional materials to the curriculum, it is important to A. Include test evaluation. B. Consider the grade or year level. C. Have a list of goals and objectives. D. Base them on the textbook used. The correct answer is letter C. Have a list of goals and objectives objectives. When you say relevance, it is useful. How will you know if the instructional materials are useful to the curriculum? Well, by looking at the objectives or the goals. Then you will find out if the instructional materials are indeed relevant. Next, 33. This period is considered the golden age of the Filipino language. A. American regime. B. Spanish regime. C. Marcos regime. B. Japanese regime. Again, this period is considered the golden age of the Filipino language. A. American regime. B. Spanish regime. C. Marcos regime. D. Japanese regime. The correct answer is letter D the Japanese regime. Why Japanese period? Why Japanese regime? It's the golden age of the Filipino language. 
In an effort to capture the minds and hearts of the Filipinos, the Japanese used theater as propaganda for their purposes, but their efforts were unsuccessful. What resulted from their propaganda program was instead the flourishing of Tagalog place and language. World War II, that's the Japanese regime, created conditions for the emergence of new Tagalog writing. Tagalog was made a national language and Tagalog classes were held. Writers in English had to learn to write in Tagalog. Essentially, Philippine literature in English during ja the Japanese occupation had no readership, no readership base, even among the already small, educated middle class. Number 34, which play of Jose Maria Fernandez tells of an artisan who forged cannons for the use of the Spaniards? A. Pandaypira, B. The Real Leader, C. The Filipino Rebel, D. The Cry of the Philippines. Again, which play of Jose Maria Fernandez tells of an artisan who forged cannons for the use of the Spaniards? A. Pandaypira, B. The Real Leader, C. The Filipino Rebel, D. The Cry of the Philippines. The correct answer is... Pandaypira. Jose Maria Fernandez was an English professor, dramatist, author, and educator. His most significant play was Pandaypira, a historical drama in three acts presented by UP's Rizal Center. Pandaypira is guys the cannons using a mold of clay and wax, which Muslim leader Raja or Raja Sulaiman used to protect Manila against the invading, the invading Spanish troops. Number 35, what is the English translation of Rabindranath Tagore's Gitanjali? A, Patriotic Hymns, B, Song of Songs, C, Song Offerings, B, Devotional Songs. Again, what is the English translation of Rabindranath Tagore's Gitanjali? It's pronounced Gitanjali. I checked from a... From a from an Indian professor of English based in the United States, Gitanjali. A. Patriotic Hymns. B. Song of Songs. C. Song Offerings. B. Devotional Songs. The correct answer is Song Offerings. The word Gitanjali is composed of Git plus Anjali. Git meaning song and Anjali means offering. So it means song offerings, Gitanjali. Okay, number 36, an interesting ethic. The Hudhud comes from A, the Isnegs, B, the Ivatan, C, the Ibaloi, C, D, the Ifugaos. A, again, an interesting ethic. The Hudhud comes from A, the Isnegs. B, the Ivatan, C, the Ibalois, D, the Ifugaos. The correct answer is letter D, the Ifugaos. Hudhud Hi Aliguyon is a famous epic of the Ifugaos in northern Luzon. Hudhud, Ifugao epic, Hudhud is one of the earliest epics ever written in the Philippines. It was believed to have originally been written in an ancient Philippine script called Alibata, and then later on translated upon discovery into Tagalog or Filipino. The Hudhud was a powerful narrative recounting the story of heroes with godlike abilities. Aliguyon was the name of Hudhud's primary hero. Although not as much famous as the Ilocos region's Biagi Lamang, or the life of Lamang, or the world-famous Beowulf, the Ifugao epic Hudhud continues to become a favorite among students or researchers of Philippine literature. The reason is because it illustrates some very important lessons, the evils and foolishness of warfare and the goodness and advantages of upholding peace. Okay, number 37, the press is referred to as the fourth estate because it, A, is a powerful political force. B, is an adversary of the government. C, checks all the branches of the government. D, acts as the fourth branch 
of the government? The correct answer is letter C checks all the branches of the government. Victorian writer Thomas Carlyle called the press the fourth estate. Why? It means that it acts as a sort of a watchdog, so it checks of the Constitution in a such form about a vital part of democratic government. Most modern writers would agree that the mass media should play a central role in sustaining and developing democracy. The media should present a full, fair, and accurate account of the news. They should inform and educate the general public, and they should cover a wide range of political opinions and positions. So it acts as you know, a check so that government officials would not abuse their power. Number 38, what does Don Quixote want to do? A, he wants to save the world. B, he wants to become the king of Spain. C, he wants to conquer land kingdoms. D, he wants to make Christianity as a world religion. Again, what does Don Quixote want to do? A, he save the world. B, become the king of Spain. C, conquer lands and kingdoms. D, make Christianity a world religion. The correct answer is he wants to save the world. The novel Don Quixote was written by Miguel de Cervantes, a Spanish writer. Don Quixote is a middle-aged gentleman from the region of La Mancha in central Spain. Obsessed with the chivalrous ideals touted in books he has read, he decides to take up his lance and sword to defend the helpless and destroy the wicked. 39. What is the function of the Filipino folk narratives? A. To teach proper behavior. C. To ward off evil spirits. C. To explain natural phenomena. D. To honor the gods. Again, what is the function of the Filipino folk narratives? A. To teach proper behavior. B. To ward off e evil spirits. C. To explain natural phenomena. D. To honor the gods. The correct answer is letter C. To explain natural phenomena. I mean, folk narratives rather are stories handed down from the remote past by words of mouth from one generation to another, reflecting the people's tradition, feelings, beliefs, and judgments. And folk narratives explain natural phenomena. For example, why pineapples have a lot of eyes? And number 40, it seeks to understand a literary work by investigating the social, cultural, and intellectual context that produced it. A context that necessarily includes the artist's biography and milieu. A, gender criticism. B, historical criticism. C, formalist criticism. D, deconstructionist criticism. The correct answer is historical criticism. What is historical criticism? A branch of history which looked at literature of evidence about economic and political events going on at the time at which the works were produced and that also looked at historical events to explain the content of literary works. Historical criticism insisted that to understand a literary piece we need to understand the author's biography and social background, ideas circulating at the time, and the cultural milieu. Number 41, what social function does a communication medium perform when it focuses the public's attention to issues so that consensus could be reached? Again, what social function does a communication medium perform when it focuses the public's attention to issues so that consensus could be reached. A. Instructor. B. Sentinel. C. Regulator. D. Arena. Correct answer is Larry D. Arena. The social functions of media. 
was propounded by Farrar in 1997. Arena is the communication media rather plays events and controversies on the community agenda, focusing attention on issues so that consensus can be reached. So arena, one of the social functions of media, according to Farrar. 42, in ESP, or English for Specific Purposes, the definition of needs vary depending on the purpose of analysis, but all take the blank as a focus of analysis. A learner, B teacher, C school, D skill. Again, in ESP, or English for Specific Purposes, the definition of needs vary depending on the purpose of analysis, but all take the blank. As a, as a focus of analysis, A, learner, B, teacher, C, school, D, skill. The correct answer is letter A, learner. In ESP, it is always the learner that gets the spotlight. The learner is the most important component of ESP. 43, what is the greatest contribution of Dr. Felipe Landa Hocano, or F. Landa Hocano, in the field of literature and anthropology. A. He consolidated the otherwise fragmented sources of Panayanan literature. B. He gave Lua, a form of joystick poetry, recited during wakes, a distinct literary form. C. He wrote a book containing the different Aswang stories, popular in the different towns of Iloilo. D. He discovered Hinila Wood, an epic poem orally transmitted from the early inhabitants of central Panay. Correct answer is, letter D. He discovered Hinila Wood, an epic poem orally transmitted from the early inhabitants of central Panay. F. Nanda Hokano was the first Filipino PhD in anthropology, the first Filipino doctor of anthropology. He discovered the epic Hinila Wood in his home province of Iloilo. 44. Which activity includes the cutting of a certain portion of pictures that are not needed? A. Cropping. B. Retouching. C. Bleeding. B. Line drawing. Again, which activity includes the cutting of a certain portion of pictures that are not needed? A. Cropping. B. Retouching. C. Bleeding. B. Line drawing. The correct answer is letter A. Cropping. Now we always do this. We crop photos. To crop is to cut a part of a photograph or picture so that it is a particular size, shape, or content. Cropping. And number 45. Audiolingualism adds features from. A. Forensic Linguistics. B. Comparative Linguistics. C. Descriptive Linguistics. D. Structural Linguistics. Again, audiolingualism adds features from A. Forensic Linguistics. B. Comparative Linguistics. C. Descriptive Linguistics. D. Structural Linguistics. The correct answer is letter D. Structural Linguistics. Audiolingualism was theoretically underpinned by structural linguistics, a movement in linguistics that focused on the phonemic, morphological, and syntactic systems underlying the grammar of a given language rather than according to traditional categories of Latin grammar. As such, it was held that learning a language involved mastering the building blocks of the language and learning the rules by which these basic elements are combined from the level of sound to the level of sentence. Number 46, who among these writers is famous for the use of local color in his stories? A. F. Chanel Jose, B. Carlos Bulosan, C. Manuel Argilia, D. Juan Laya. Again, who among these writers is famous for the use of local color in his stories? A. F. Chanel Jose. B. Carlos Bulosan, C. Manuel Argilia, D. Juan Laya. The correct answer is Manuel Argilia. He was an Ilocano writer who wrote the famous short story, 
how my brother Leon brought home a wife. He's known as the most prominent author who used local color in his story. What is local color? You here you feature the culture, the values, and even the language of the locality. That is the concept of local color. 47. How long does it take Odysseus to return home? A. 48 hours. B. 6 months. C. 15 days. D. 10 years. Again, how long does it take Odysseus to return home? A. 48 hours. B. 6 months. C. 15 days. D. 10 years. The correct answer is 10 years. Odysseus in Roman Ulysses. He was a hero in Homer's epic poem, The Odyssey. He was the king of Ithaca. His wanderings and his exploits are the central theme of The Odyssey. Homer's The Odyssey describes Odysseus' adventures, which lasted for 10 years as he tries to return home after the Trojan War and reassert his place as the rightful king of Ithaca. 48. Which of the following is not a work by Leo Tolstoy? A. The Death of Ivan Ilyich. B. Fathers and Sons. C. War and Peace. B. Anna Karenina. Again, which of the following is not a work by Leo Tolstoy? A. The Death of Ivan Ilyich. B. Fathers and Sons. C. War and Peace. B. Anna Karenina. Correct answer is Fathers and Sons. Why? Because it was not written by Leo Tolstoy, but by it was written by Ivan Torgenev. Torgenev. Forty-nine. The school board is considering changes to the number of credits required for graduation. Which news element is present here? A. Significance. B. Timeliness. C. Proximity. D. Oddity. The correct answer is significance. Significance as a news element means anything that affects the life of people or a group of people is news. Changes to the number of credits required for graduation will affect the students. So it's news for them. That is the element of timeliness. Number 50, to punish himself for murdering his father and having sexual relationship with his mother, what did Oedipus do? A. He gouged his eyes. B. He castrated himself. C. He killed himself. D. He did not eat for several days. Again, to punish himself for murdering his father and having sexual relationship with his mother, what did Oedipus do? A. He gouged his eyes. B. He castrated himself. C. He killed himself. D. He did not eat for several days. Correct answer is letter A. He gouged his eyes. Oedipus was a mythical Greek king of Thebes. He killed his father and married his mother. That is why in psychology we have the Oedipus complex. After or he stabs out his own eyes after finding out that his mother kills herself. It's Oedipus. The correct answer is letter A. So that's it. So we have rationalized all 50 questions. So we will end here. See you next week for set 10.